Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, then my name is Rosie and I am a recent graduate, or soon to be graduate, I have finished my degree though, from the University of Oxford and I am here today to tell you how to get the most out of your lectures. So these tips, although they are written for university lectures, will also apply to A-levels and GCSEs and are general tips for note taking and for getting the most out of your notes. So without further ado, here we go. Tip number one is a quick tip and it will be further explained in the other tips, but just for now, handwrite your notes. Now I know a lot of people can't handwrite their notes for whatever reason and that's fine, you're not losing anything by typing your notes or even having a scribe or anything like that but handwriting notes does secure that muscle memory. I would say though that yeah keeping up with your professor sometimes they speak really fast and it's very difficult to keep up with what they're saying so if you are a slow writer or if you're fast handwriting is quite illegible then maybe do type up your notes but definitely practicing writing fast under pressure is a skill that you are going to need for your exams so by doing that you are also practicing your exam work mum's just put the washing machine on and i don't know if you can hear it in this but it's right under my feet so it's going like If you do prefer making type notes, there is a software called Sonascent which records and lets you type at the same time and this leads me on to point number two which is to record your lectures if you are allowed. Make sure you have permission though first and don't share it with people on the internet unless they are also like on your course and were there because you could get yourself into some big trouble but these apps are great for revisiting the lecture when you get home and making sure that you have actually got everything that has been said to you. I've never used one of these apps because I didn't know they existed. So what it does is it kind of has one screen which records the audio and one screen where you can type notes attached to the audio. You do have to re-go over it when you get home. That's the whole point. Is you then take the recording and the words revisit it at home and write it out again and make sure you've got everything you could rearrange your points, you could link points together sometimes lecturers go off on tangents which are related but perhaps have come later in the lecture to what they were actually related to so your notes might be a bit jumbled in that respect and using this you can then rearrange it all and make sure you've got everything tip number three if you are note taking from a powerpoint make sure you write down the slide number that you are on every time the slide changes even if it's just a photo put the number because when you're revisiting it if they've uploaded the powerpoints but not like actually recorded the lectures to some shared space that you have on your course they might just be pictures or just references and because of that you have no idea what has actually been said in the lecture so if you're revisiting it and you think actually I didn't understand that topic very well, even though you went to the lecture and did all the work, you might try and rewatch the lecture and you have no idea where your notes fit in relation to the slides. But if you have the number on it, then you know very easily that ah, this chunk of a text which I listened to the lecturer say but isn't actually on the screen matches this reference. And it's just much more easy to keep your notes coherent and actually understand what's going on. Tip number four is something you have probably been told your whole school life and A-level life and whatever other education you have done. Ask questions. There's nothing to be ashamed of in asking questions. Yes, it might be embarrassing. Yes, it's definitely daunting and scary. But chances are, and you've definitely heard this before as well, other people also want to know what you want to know. And even if they don't, you're there for you, not for them. You're there to learn and get your degree or your A-levels or your GCSEs. If you don't understand something, put your hand up, find out what's going on. And if you don't want to do it in front of everyone, 
wait till the end and go and ask them or even send an email about it because I have uh, I have learned so much from asking questions particularly doing archaeology and anthropology they're both new subjects most of the time I had no idea what words mean who this person was what year something happened in just ask the tutors have been doing this for so long that they forget that they're not explaining the basics and they forget that they're going straight into this level that actually most people in the room don't understand what's going on and some people will and they might look at you a bit like stuff them because you're there too and you've got every right to be there too and just because you don't know something doesn't mean that you shouldn't be there or you should be there any less than anyone else just ask the question JUST DO IT! Number five has already been said several times in this video already is to revisit that lecture when you get home. I am guilty of not doing this nearly enough times and then having to do it at the last minute when I'm actually revising for exams which I wouldn't recommend. It does work but it tires you out and it takes up time that you could be spending on doing something else. If you go through your lectures again as you're doing it, you can cement that knowledge constantly and consistently throughout your degree, throughout your A-levels, throughout your GCSEs and then you can keep adding knowledge to it because you need to understand the base to get the bits that are more complicated. When you are revisiting the lectures definitely use colour coding, add photos, highlight bits that you think are particularly interesting. If they've mentioned a name for example in archaeology, if they've mentioned a name of a site or of a period that you're not quite sure what time it actually is use the internet, use books, follow the references that they've given you I for example have to learn about a lot of sites and without finding a picture to put with my notes it's very difficult to envisage what is actually being spoken about so to actually go through and say okay everything in red is about this site, everything in orange is about this site, this picture is of this, this is of this, it's much more easy to separate it out so that when I come back to it in revision I can go oh yeah that makes a lot of sense. Okay so number six is a tip that I did not do and have thought of retrospectively as something that would have really helped uh, to go back through old lectures quite regularly but if you have a new lecture or a tutorial that you think oh this, this kind of links to something I did last month then go back to that lecture and add the notes in a different colour that you now know in addition to those notes. I can only use the example of my own degree because I have no idea what anyone else does but in archaeology and anthropology we get more marks for linking the two and not just kind of doing two separate subjects so in anthropology if I learn about something that I could relate to archaeology or it's more likely that I would relate something in archaeology to anthropology so for example if we're doing the anthropology of ritual and I remember that there is an archaeological example of ritual that links to someone else's theory I would add that to those lecture notes in a different colour and then I can come back to it and already have that link made and not have to waste time thinking of links when I'm cramming closer to the exam. Tip number seven. seven. Record yourself saying your lecture notes now it's all oh. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go read my book until uh, the washing machine calms down a bit because I don't even know if you can hear this but it's annoying me so uh, I'll see you in like I don't know 15 minutes 12 seconds later okay so I actually do do this tip and that is to record yourself saying your lecture notes even if you've got a recording of the lecture it's just so much more useful to record yourself because I guess your brain responds to your own voice better and also you have to speak what you've written in order to record it so you're revisiting your own notes several times if you record yourself saying it you can then listen to it before bed like when you're brushing your teeth on the way to other lectures, on the way to tutorials I listened to revision on the way to my exams and the, the exam that I did that for I actually performed like better as an average on compared to all my other ones 
And as well as kind of just being generally stuck in your head, if you listen to it over a long period of time, you might start to attach facts or, I don't know, theories that you're listening to to the places that you're listening to them. So if you always listen to one thing when you brush your teeth, always listen to one thing when you walk to this specific lecture, always listen to one thing when you walk past a specific building or landmark, you're going to start relating whatever that object or place is to that fact and that area of subject that you have to remember. So it is triggering that active memory and as Sherlock calls it, his mind palace and you can start kind of creating this map almost of facts that you know and obviously this is not going to work as a short time, short time short term. You, you could, you do, you wait. Short term thing, this is going to be a long term building up over a period of time, even throughout kind of your whole degree, throughout a whole year of your degree, depending on like how much time you have between exams. I know at Oxford I had basically my whole degree, so that would have helped if I did it for the whole time, but I learned too late about this, so I'm telling you now. Number eight is just to organize your notes into a folder. Make sure you have either a small folder for like every topic or a big folder for each subject with dividers in for every topic because if you don't organize them into the right place, how are you supposed to come back to them and how are you supposed to subconsciously order these things in your mind if they're all over the place in real life? I would recommend printing off notes, if you don't handwrite them, print off the ones that you've typed in order to then have them as a physical copy arranged, you know, in real life as opposed to organised on the computer. If, because I know printing is expensive so like if, if you don't want to print out then fair enough but make sure your laptop or computer or whatever device your notes are on is also organised well. Number nine is an incredibly good tip. It doesn't come from me actually, although I did do this. I think I just definitely learned this at school. Do you know when they give you those uh, activities where you have to and then teach what you learn to every member of the group and do like a carousel and a presentation and you learn from others? You hated it in school, right? I'm gonna ask you to do it again now because it works really well for a vision. No! If you learn a topic, you give someone else who also does your subject a different topic and the same for someone else and then you teach each other in, in a big circle of learning. This isn't even a circle. This, I don't know what I'm doing. Basically, if you teach people what you've learned, you have to have learned it properly in order for them to understand it. And this works even better if you are teaching someone who has absolutely no idea what is going on in your subject because you have to literally describe everything so you have to explain all the definitions all of the people you have to you have to know everything back to back about all of the things that you're learning in order to teach it someone so well that they can then also teach it back to you okay my tenth and final tip is not about note taking it's just about how to attend lectures in general now you can wear whatever you want to a lecture and a lot of people do just turn up in dressing gowns I'm not even joking it depends how close you live to your university so I personally would not recommend going so kind of dressed down that it doesn't feel like a lecture it just feels like you're sitting there Particularly when it gets too hot, if you're wearing like joggers, a dressing gown, a really nice comfy hoodie, yeah the comfort is great, like do not wear something uncomfortable because you'll be sat there fidgeting for however long it is, but don't wear something so comfy and so snuggly that you're going to fall asleep within 10 minutes of sitting down and listening to someone talk. Because you need to be engaged, otherwise you're not going to take anything in. I think just, you know, a pair of leggings and a top or a pair of trousers, jeans and a top or a skirt or a dress like this. I've gone in joggers before and sometimes it works for me if you're tired 
basically don't go in really really comfy clothes because it won't work out for you well that is my 10 tips and i hope that at least some of them were helpful for you for those of you who are going to uni in the next couple of weeks Good luck if you've just started. Again, congratulations for getting in. Good luck with starting your lectures. I hope Freshers is going to be great for you and don't panic too much. Yes, it's scary. It is going to be hard at first. It is quite a jump, but you can do it. You're there for a reason. Everyone has got into uni for a reason. You can be there. You, you've passed all of the exam requirements and you deserve that place. Now, just take advice from people who are older than you, people who've done it before. Listen to them because, you know, they're not telling you things just for the sake of it. They're telling you things because they know where they went wrong and what they would do differently if they did it again. So, on that note, uh, okay. Give this video a thumbs up to show me that you're going to take these tips and not make the same mistake I did. And subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. And yeah, good luck with everything. Bye!